you could help a lot of people if this goes well. Yeah. James Fisher has been using drugs for more than half of his 36 years. How did you end up getting drawn to drugs in the first place? From my social anxiety. I discovered Xanax super early in high school. How did it make you feel? Immediate bliss and euphoria. In his 20s, he looked like a different person, moved to painkillers and heroin, has been in treatment a dozen times, and even sober doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm flat right now. How do you mean flat? Not happy, not sad, not just happy, sort of not this. Not sad, just in the middle. No emotions whatsoever. When we met at the West Virginia University Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute, James was about to be the third person in America to have an experimental brain surgery that doctors hope could be the key to overcoming his substance abuse. I mean, I'm getting holes drilled into my brain. Like, it's scary. Why are you willing to do that? Because I don't want to die. So that's James, this is his brain. Dr. Ali Rezai and his team mapped James's brain to find the exact paths to implant two wires carrying brain stimulating electrodes. So if, if you're off by a millimeter, you're in the wrong spot. A kind of brain pacemaker implanted in the chest sends electrical impulses to the reward center deep in the brain. The brain becomes sensitized, this reward center in the brain. So you keep on wanting to experience that initial feeling to feel good from the dopamine high. So our goal is to regulate that or normalize the dopamine imbalance in the brain. Other signals are sent to the frontal lobe. Where decision making happens. That's right, right exactly. Long term planning. Long term planning, the goal is to activate the frontal lobes more so you can be more in charge of your behaviors and make better decisions. We watched Dr. Rezai implant the first wire. How deep is the electrode? It's about five centimeters. Then they woke James and tested the device. What are you feeling? Any change you're noticing overall for you? Uh, happier. As they adjusted the position and strength of the stimulation, James reacted. How about uh, anxiety? Not much anxiety. Energy, I have a lot more energy right now. They also showed him photos of drugs and measured his cravings. How about, um, just to go through heroin craving, butter being the uh, most heavy. I feel like I don't need to be happy right now, so we get about 30. This is where you're living now? Yep. It's sober living? Sober living house. We caught up with James four weeks after surgery. How you doing? I'm doing good. Great. Fantastic. Feel weird at all, or? No, no? I don't feel weird. I'm just not depressed, not anxious, not irritable. Nothing gets on my nerves. James says he felt an immediate difference. It's like somebody covered you up with a warm blanket. You know, and just, just the feeling of everything's okay. I used to have a really hard time making decisions. You feel more clear now? Yeah, yeah, more clear. Um, just, I don't go back and forth in my head as much whenever I'm trying to make decisions. He's been sober three and a half months, now living in the same home where 35-year-old Jared Buckhalter works. Two years ago, Jared was the first person in the U.S. to allow Dr. Rezai to operate on his brain. A star wide receiver in high school in a small town in Pennsylvania, he was being recruited to play in college. But when that didn't happen, his life took a turn. I felt that I'd let everybody down, and you know, that just really put me in a bad spot mentally. And the only thing that I knew to use to cope with that was pain pills. For years, he spiraled downward. I had resolved to the fact that he was going to die. Uh, oh, we gosh. just knew, well, he was either he was going to crash a car or OD or something, but something was going to happen. You drove a lot of people away, right? Mm -hmm. Family, friends. A lot got to the point where I literally had nobody, you know. The surgery was a last resort. Do you think this device saved your life? I, I, do, I believe it did. I'm coming up on two years of uh, continuous sobriety. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. Jared just marked two years. James has been sober for nearly four months. The only other person to have the surgery relapsed. Mm -hmm. It's still early and more so research is needed. But for Jared and James, the brain stimulation is helping them stick with the work of recovery. Has it changed you? So it has. In every aspect of my life, it has changed me for the better. Has it made I, it easier to stay sober? It's made it much easier. Both have strong family support. What has it been like for you? Like Christmas every day. That's, that was the way I described it. It's Christmas every day. Do you think what you've gone through actually shows that 
addiction is something in part physical, physiological. Sure, it is definitely a brain disease. And I think that this only proves that. He's proud that he's repaired relationships. I became a much better son, you know, brother, uncle, uh, friend. I think that I'm finally the person that, that all of them hoped I would be. Has your personality changed at all? I don't know, because I really didn't know who I was before. I've never had a substantial amount of clean time to really nail down who am I. Without drugs? Yeah. So this is, you know, the longest I've been clean in a while, and I'm just starting to figure out who, who I am. Kate Snow, NBC News, Morgantown, West Virginia. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.